Well, that's not a very Wine Abbey title. One of the things I hope to do with this channel, and really all of us hope to do at Wine Ab, is to inspire you. I hope this stuff is informative, but I also hope it energizes you to make positive changes that make your life better. But what if we're going about this all wrong? What if the way we try to inspire ourselves is actually making it harder to achieve our goals? And what if there's a better way? I'm Ben, and this is Sketchy Advice. I want you to do an exercise with me. Think about something you want. It could be something you want to accomplish, something you want to purchase, a good habit you want to build, or a bad habit you want to break. It doesn't have to be about money, just something you'd like to become a reality. And ideally, choose something that you could reasonably attain if you set your mind to it and put in the work. Now, I want you to fast forward to the future and imagine that you've done it. You've nailed it. That dream is now a reality. Picture what that would be like. Imagine a scenario where it might come up and how you would feel. Imagine your friend telling you how much they love the novel you wrote, or your boss telling you how much more confident you've been lately, or driving the car knowing you can afford any repair, or whatever success looks like for you. Lean into this. Let your imagination go crazy, okay? Okay, here's the thing. We might have just made it less likely that you actually achieve that dream. In her book, Rethinking Positive Thinking, Gabrielle Oettingen suggests through her studies that people who spend time vividly visualizing a goal, like weight loss, getting a good grade, asking someone out, becoming more active, those dreamers were actually less likely to achieve their goals. Why? Well, that's a tricky question. Her research suggests that it has a lot to do with our subconscious mind. Think about watching the end of a movie. What you're watching isn't real, but you do feel a sense of resolution in your body when the fish do in fact find Nemo. Well, our fantasies are a kind of mind movie. The success you're visualizing isn't real yet, but your subconscious mind doesn't really know that. So it produces a sense of resolution and relaxation. And while that feels really nice, it's not really what you want if you're trying to achieve something. You don't want a football team to kick back and relax at halftime. You want them focused, energized, ready to go. Odengen found that positive fantasizing literally decreases systolic blood pressure, which is great for feeling relaxed, but also signals a dip in energy. What's more, people who engaged in positive fantasizing had a harder time processing information about obstacles to their goal. And you're gonna have a hard time achieving something if you're unwilling to acknowledge what's standing in your way. So dreaming about a better future is bad? Should we just stop? Actually, no. You don't need to stop dreaming. In fact, you could probably benefit from dreaming harder. The trick is to also do it smarter. Think back to that thing you want, the one you imagined earlier. Now ask yourself, what is the most critical internal obstacle to your success? If you wanna write a novel, for instance, what's most likely to get in your way? A perfectionist tendency? an inclination to switch to something new, identify that obstacle and imagine how it might prevent the outcome you want. For instance, if I struggle with perfectionism, that I might find myself rewriting the same scene over and over. I can imagine sitting at my computer, eyes bloodshot, watching the minutes slip away as I continue to not make any progress. I look at all the novels on my bookshelf and I think, how is it that Brandon Sanderson can write six books a year and I just spent the last 20 minutes rewriting the same three sentences. The goal of this exercise isn't to bum you out. There's no requirement to judge yourself for the obstacles you have. After all, we all have obstacles. The goal is to ground your dream in reality. That novel isn't going to magically come together in a flurry of totally fun, effortless days of nothing but quality writing. It's going to bump up against those obstacles. And giving our brains space to really consider these obstacles has some surprising effects. Odengen found that people who practice what she calls mental contrasting created a strong association in their brain between their dream and that obstacle. They couldn't think about their dream without also being subconsciously aware of the obstacle. And as long as their dream was something they thought could actually be attained, that energized them toward action. 
Mental contrasting also seems to make people more capable of recognizing other obstacles to their goal, identifying behaviors that will help them achieve their goal, and processing constructive criticism related to their goal. In other words, it just makes you more effective. But we can take this one step further by making a little plan. If this obstacle occurs, then I will do this. For instance, if I feel myself stalling during a writing session because I'm worried that what I'm writing isn't good enough, then I will remind myself that I can always edit my less than great writing later. Or if I feel myself stalling during a writing session because I'm worried that what I'm writing isn't good enough, then I will do a 10 minute free write without worrying about grammar or quality. This is called an implementation intention. It's a way of dealing with those obstacles we know are going to occur. Part of the stress of dealing with obstacles is figuring out what to do about them. An implementation intention gives you a script to refer back to. The process of dealing with the obstacle becomes more automatic and it requires less conscious thought and willpower. Oettingen and psychologist Peter Golwitzer combined the practice of mental contrasting and implementation intentions as a way of helping people turn dreams into practical plans. They outline it with the acronym WHOOP. First, you identify a wish. What do you want to achieve? Next, you visualize the outcome. Imagine what your life would look like in detail if your wish came true. After that, it's time to think about the obstacle. What is the most critical internal obstacle to your wish? Imagine scenarios where it might prevent you from reaching your goal. What would that look like? How would it feel? And finally, make a plan for tackling that obstacle with an implementation intention. If this obstacle occurs, I will do this. So what would this look like for your money? Maybe there's a spending habit you'd like to change or a big purchase you'd like to make, or maybe you just like to get more organized. The crucial thing is to begin with the dream. Interestingly, Oettingen found this doesn't work nearly as well if we visualize the obstacles first and the dream second. There's something about beginning with your hopes and dreams that fuels motivation in a way that worrying about contingencies just doesn't. So don't start by thinking about all the things keeping you from paying off your debt or buying those concert tickets. Give yourself permission to dream a little. In fact, give yourself permission to dream a lot. And then you can think about what's getting in your way. Something like YNAB that helps you spend money intentionally and lets you see everything in one place can make a huge difference when it comes time to actually make a plan. For instance, I'm a bit of an impulse spender. Yes, I, a, a YNAB employee. And I'd like my monthly fund money to last more than a week. So my plan is simply, if I really wanna spend fund money on something I didn't plan for, then I will check YNAB to see how much fun money I have left. Maybe I still buy the thing, maybe I don't. But I'm shaping my habits to become more intentional about how I spend. Because after all, how I wanna spend my money is just another way of talking about how I want to spend my life. I've got dreams for my life, big ones and little ones. And a lot of them require money. And that's what YNAB's all about. It's not about budgeting to make sure you don't spend more than this much because that's not responsible. It's about giving you a practical tool for making your dreams, big ones, little ones, flashy ones, and boring ones, a reality. If you'd like a tool like that and you've never tried YNAB, why not give our 34 day free trial a shot? And if you like learning about how your brain is weird and money is weird, then give that subscribe button a little, a little nudge, a little boop, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.